This article is about Italian military operations in World War I, nominally allied with the Central Powers of the German Empire and the Empire of Austria-Hungary in the Triple Alliance. The Kingdom of Italy refused to join them when the war started in August 1914. Instead in May 1915, almost a year after the war's commencement, after a period of wavering and after secret negotiations with France and Great Britain in which Italy negotiated for territory if victorious, Italy entered the war on the side of the Allies. Italy fought mostly against Austria-Hungary along the northern border, including high up in the now Italian Alps and along the Isonzo River. The war was initially a failure for Italy despite being numerically superior to Austria-Hungary. The Italian army repeatedly attacked Austria, making little progress and suffering heavy losses and then being routed in 1917 by a German-Austrian counter-offensive after Russia left the war allowing the Central Powers to move reinforcements to the Italian front from the Eastern Front. In October 1918, as civil unrest increased in Austria-Hungary, the Italians attacked again. The Austrian army broke, and the Italians drove deep into Austrian territory. Fighting ended on 3 November 1918. Italy and the Allies had been victorious. From neutrality to intervention, Italy was officially a member of the Triple Alliance with Germany and Austria-Hungary. Despite this, in the years before the war, Italy had enhanced its diplomatic efforts towards the United Kingdom and France. This was because the Italian government had grown convinced that support of Austria would not gain Italy the territories she wanted, Trieste, Istria, Zara and Dalmatia, all Austrian possessions. In fact, a secret agreement signed with France in 1902 practically nullified Italy's membership in the Triple Alliance. A few days after the outbreak of the war, on 3 August 1914, the government, led by the conservative Antonio Salandra, declared that Italy would not commit its troops, maintaining that the Triple Alliance had only a defensive stance and Austria-Hungary had been the aggressor. In reality, both Salandra and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sidney Sonino, began to probe which side would grant the best reward for Italy's entrance in the war. Although the majority of the cabinet was firmly against intervention, numerous intellectuals, including socialists such as Ivano Bonomi, Leonida Bissolatia and, since 18 October 1914, Benito Mussolini declared in favour of intervention, which was then mostly supported by the nationalist and the liberal parties. Pro-interventionist socialists believed that, once that weapons had been distributed to the people, they could have transformed the war into a revolution. The diplomatic moves led to the London Pact, signed by Sonino without the approval of the Italian Parliament. According to the pact, after victory Italy was to get Trentino and the South to roll up to the Brenner Pass, the entire Austrian littoral, Gorizia and Gradescar and Istria, parts of western Carniola and northwestern Dalmatia with Zara and most of the islands, but without split. Other agreements concerned the sovereignty of the port of Alona, the province of Antalya in Turkey and part of the German colonies in Africa. Germany and Austria-Hungary had only advanced the possibility of negotiating parts of the Trentino and Eastern Free Uli, without Gorizia and Trieste. The offer of the French protectorate of Tunisia was deemed unsatisfactory. Under the London Pact, Italy joined the Triple Entente. On 3 May 1915 Italy officially revoked the Triple Alliance. In the following days Giolitti and the neutralist majority of the parliament opposed declaring war, while nationalist crowds demonstrated in public areas for it. On 13 May Salandra offered his resignation to King Victor Emmanuel III, but Giolitti, fearful of nationalist disorder that might break into open rebellion, declined to succeed as Prime Minister and Salandra's resignation was not accepted. On 23 May, Italy declared war on Austria-Hungary. This was followed by declarations of war on the Ottoman Empire, Bulgaria and the German Empire, Italian Front, 
The front on the Austrian border was 650 kilometers long, stretching from the Stelvio Pass to the Adriatic Sea. Italian forces were numerically superior but this advantage was negated by the difficult terrain. Further, the Italians lacked strategic and tactical leadership. The Italian commander-in-chief was Luigi Cadorna, a staunch proponent of the frontal assault whose tactics cost the lives of hundreds of thousands of Italian soldiers. His plan was to attack on the Isonzo front, with the dream of breaking over the Karst Plateau into the Carniolan Basin, taking Ljubljana and threatening the Austro-Hungarian Empire's capital Vienna. It was a Napoleonic plan, which had no realistic chance of success in an age of barbed wire, machine guns, and indirect artillery fire. Combined with hilly and mountainous terrain, opening shots the first shells were fired in the dawn of 24 May 1915 against the enemy positions of Servignano del Friuli which was captured a few hours later. On the same day the Austro-Hungarian fleet bombarded the railway stations of Manfredonia and Ancona. The first Italian casualty was Riccardo di Giusto. The main effort was to be concentrated in the Isonzo and Vipavar valleys and on the Cras Plateau, in the direction of Ljubljana. The Italian troops had some initial successes, but as in the Western Front, the campaign soon evolved into trench warfare. In the first months of the war Italy launched the following offensives. First Battle of the Isonzo, Second Battle of the Isonzo, Third Battle of the Isonzo, Fourth Battle of the Isonzo. In these first four battles, the Italian army registered 60,000 fatalities and more than 150,000 wounded, equivalent to around one-fourth of the mobilized forces. The offensive in the Upper Cador, near the Col di Lana, though secondary, blocked large Austro-Hungarian contingents. Since it menaced their main logistic lines in Tyrol, Italian offensives of 1916-17 this stalemate dragged on for the whole of 1916. While the Austro-Hungarians amassed large forces in Trentino, the Italian command launched the Fifth Battle of the Isonzo, lasting for eight days from the 11th of March 1916. This attempt was also fruitless. In June the Austro-Hungarian counter-offensive broke through in Trentino and occupied the whole Alto Piano di Asiago. The Italian army managed however to contain the offensive and the enemy retreated in order to strengthen its position in the Casa. On 4 August began the Sixth Battle of the Isonzo which five days later led to the Italian conquest of Gorizia, at the cost of 20,000 dead and 50,000 wounded. The year ended with three new offensives, Seventh Battle of the Isonzo, Eighth Battle of the Isonzo, Ninth Battle of the Isonzo. The price was a further 37,000 dead and 88,000 wounded for the Italians, again for no remarkable conquest. In late 1916, the Italian army advanced for some kilometers in Trentino, while, for the whole winter of 1916-1917, the situation in the Isonzo front remained stationary. On December 28, 1917 was the Tenth Battle of the Isonzo. The Battle of Mount Ortegara was Cadorna's attempt to conquer back some territories in Trentino which had remained under Austro-Hungarian control. On 18 August 1917 began the most important Italian offensive, the Eleventh Battle of the Isonzo. This time, the Italian advance was initially successful as the Bain Scissor Plateau southeast of Tolmino was captured but the Italian army outrang its artillery and supply lines, thus preventing the further advance that could have finally succeeded in breaking the Austro-Hungarian army. The Austro-Hungarian line ultimately held and the attack was abandoned on 12 September 1917. Austro-Hungarian offensives of 1917-18 Though the last Italian offensive had proven inconclusive, the Austrians were in strong need of reinforcements. 
These became available when Russia crumbled and German troops from the Eastern Front were sent to the Eisenzer Front. On 24 October 1917, the Central Powers troops broke through the Italian lines in the Upper Isenzo, converging on Caporetto and surrounding the Second Italian Army. The Italian Army commander, Luigi Capello, had been informed of a probable enemy attack, but had underestimated it. From that area the Austro-Hungarians advanced for 150 kilometers southwest, reaching Udine after only four days. The defeat of Caporetto caused the disintegration of the whole Italian front of the Isenzo. The situation was re-established by forming a stop line on the Taglamento and then on the Piaf rivers, but at the price of 700,000 dead, wounded and prisoners. Kidorna, who had tried to attribute the causes of the disasters to the Second Army, was fired. On 8 November 1917 he was replaced by Armando Diaz. The Central Powers ended the year 1917 with a general offensive on the Pialve, the Alto Piano di Asiago, and the Monte Grappa. The Italian army was forced to call the 1899 levy, while that of 1900 was left for an hypothetical final effort for the year of 1919. Italian victory The severe discipline imposed by Cadorna, the long months spent in the trenches, and the words of Pope Benedict XV in Vatican City in Rome about the useless massacre of the war had weakened the Italian army's morale, and were among the causes of the defeat of Caporetto. The Italian morale was however boosted by the need to save Italy itself from invasion. Further, the reorganization of the front, a changed tactical stance, allowed Diaz to concentrate his forces on a more defendable front. The Austro-Hungarians stopped their attacks to prepare an offensive for the spring of 1918. New reinforcements joined in after the end of the war against Russia. The offensive began on 15 June 1918 with six divisions. The Italians resisted the assault. The failure of the offensive marked the swan song of Austria-Hungary on the Italian front. The Central Powers proved finally unable to sustain further the war effort. While the multi-ethnic entities of the Austrian Empire were on the verge of rebellion, the Italians rescheduled earlier their planned 1919 counter-offensive to October 1918 in order to prevent Austria-Hungary's recovery. The Italian attack, aided by a small contingent of French, British, Czechoslovak, and American troops, was started on 24 October from Vittorio Veneto. The Austro-Hungarians fought tenaciously for four days, but the army began to disintegrate after the troops heard of revolutions and independence proclamations in the lands of the dual monarchy. Austria asked for an armistice on 29 October. The armistice was signed on 3 November at Villa Giusta, near Padua. Italian soldiers entered Trento while Bersaglieri landed from the sea in Trieste. The latter were not included in the territories originally promised secretly by the Allies to Italy in case of victory. But the Italians decided to intervene in reply to a local national council formed after the flight of the Hungarians and which had announced the union to the Kingdom of Italy. The Italian army was also marching towards Ljubljana, but was halted by Serb troops. In the meantime the Regi Marina occupied Pola and Sebenico, which became the capital of the military government of Dalmatia. Other theatres Balkan's Italian troops played a major role in the defence of Albania against Austria-Hungary. From 1916 the Italian 35th Division fought on the Salonica front as part of the Allied Army of the Orient. The Italian 16th Corps took part in actions against Austro-Hungarian forces in Albania. In 1917 they established an Italian protectorate over Albania. Western Front Some Italian divisions were also sent to support the Entente on the Western Front. In 1918 Italian troops saw intense combat during the spring offensive. Their most prominent engagement on this front was their role in the Second Battle of the Marne. Middle East Italy played a token role in the Sinai and Palestine campaign. 
sending a detachment of 500 soldiers to assist the British there in 1917. As Italy entered the war on 23 May 1915, the situation of her forces in the African colonies was critical. Italian Somaliland in the east was far from being pacified and in North Africa's Cyrenaica the Italian forces were confined to some separated points on the coast. But in neighbouring Tripolitania and Fezzan, the story has a different beginning. In August 1914, during their previous colonial invasion and occupation versus local military and forces of the Ottoman Empire, the Italian forces reached Gat, that is, conquered most of western Libya. But in November 1914, this advance turned into a general retreat, and on 7 April and 28 April, they suffered two reverses at Wadi Masat and al kurdabia respectively. By August 1915, the situation in Tripolitania was similar to that of Cyrenaica. The conquest of all of Libya was not resumed until January 1922. Consequences Italy's representative in the Paris Peace Conference which led to the Versailles Treaty was Premier Vittorio Emmanuel Orlando, considered one of the Big Four, with President Woodrow Wilson of the United States, Prime Minister David Lloyd George of the United Kingdom, and Premier Georges Clemenceau of the French Republic. After being stymied several times in pressing his nation's claims on Dalmatia and part of German colonies conquered by the Allies, he finally left the conference in a boycott. The territorial gains were small in comparison to the cost of the war for Italy. The debt contracted to pay for the war's expenses was finally paid back only in the 1970s. The uncertain socio-economic situation caused heavy social strife which led to the Biennio Rosso and later the rise of fascism and its leader Benito Mussolini.